Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jay, and I'm back here again with another video. And this time around, I wanted to take another look at Ubuntu Mate 18.04. Now, I've reviewed this distribution on my channel in the past, but I wanted to take another look because 18.04.2 was just recently released. And I thought that this would be a good excuse for me to put this distribution back on my laptop and just give it another try. Now, what's significant about 1804.2 is that unlike 1804.1, there's actually a new hardware enablement stack included by default when you install this distribution. And this is one of those things that it's not necessarily user facing. You don't visually see any difference, but your machine might operate faster, but at the very least you'll have better hardware compatibility, which is actually an awesome thing that I don't think Canonical gets a lot of credit for. And this isn't specific to Ubuntu Mate, it's Ubuntu wide. Let's go ahead and take another look at Ubuntu Mate 18.04. So here I am on my Galago with a freshly installed 18.04. I actually installed this before 18.04.2 came out, and then I upgraded to 18.04.2 when that was released. So I started with the previous kernel, which I believe was 4.15 and the new hardware enablement stack gives you the 4.18 kernel. So if I open up a terminal, you see that I now have kernel 4.18. Now, it's important to understand though that if you have already installed Ubuntu Mate in the past before 1804.2 came out, you'll still be on the old kernel. The new hardware enablement stack is actually opt-in. So if you don't opt into it, you actually will still be on the same kernel and driver stack that came with Ubuntu Mate 18.04 when it was first released. So to upgrade manually, I'm gonna pull up the command I ran here so you guys can see that. And credit to OMG Ubuntu for providing this command. But basically what I did was I ran this command and then I rebooted my system after all the packages installed and I was on the new hardware enablement stack. Now, it's important to understand that if you actually install 1804.2 from scratch, you'll already have the new hardware enablement stack. You only need to manually install this if you had an installation of Ubuntu Mate prior to 1804.2. But if you're installing this from an 1804.2 installation media or newer, you'll automatically have the new hardware enablement stack. So let's just take a quick look at this release. I already reviewed this on a previous video, but I figured, you know, I do wanna take another look at this, especially now that I'm recording with different equipment from the time period in which I actually originally recorded that video. So one of the things that Ubuntu Mate is most famous for is Ubuntu Mate Welcome. And this includes a software boutique. And if you click here, you'll actually have a list of common applications that a lot of people want to install and it makes it really easy to do so. So for example, if I click on games and then I go down here to Steam, all I have to do is click install. And you can also queue up the changes as well. So for example, if I wanted Google Chrome, I could also add that to the list. So I'll click install for that. And then I'll click up here for the queue and then I'll go ahead and apply it. So here I am installing Steam and Google Chrome. Now those two applications aren't necessarily hard to install by themselves, but some of the applications here have quite a few manual steps if you were to follow a how-to guide for installing them. And the software boutique actually you know, makes it so that you don't have to do that. It just automates the entire process. And that's great because sometimes, you know, you just want to be up and running quickly and you don't necessarily want to um, enter a bunch of manual commands to install something. Now, one example of that for me is every now and then I like to play Minecraft. So I'll click finished. And here we'll have Minecraft in the list, which, you know, needs you to actually install Java and set up a launcher and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and click install. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply this. And it's still installing, it just finished installing Google Chrome, so that's good. Now it's going to get ready to install Minecraft. And we have Minecraft installed, and let's see if it works. And 
and you can see that we have Minecraft. I'm not gonna go ahead and load that, but you get the idea. I was able to install that very easily. And that's one of the things that I enjoy most about Mate. And Ubuntu Mate does a lot of great things. The software boutique is just one of them, but also the attention to detail and polish of this distribution is great as well. Now, the theme that we have here is completely custom. If you were to install the Mate desktop environment on another distribution, chances are it does not include this theme. And I'll admit that I'm a little biased in favor of this theme because green is my favorite color. So this is the one distribution in existence where the theme is so appealing to me that I don't even bother to change it. I, I might change the wallpaper, but I don't change anything else. But we do have other themes. So if I was to just take a look at the themes here, go ahead and get this out of the way. My favorite uh, background set is this one right here, which is just a um, slideshow of various uh, space-related backgrounds. But in regards to the actual theme itself, Ambient Mate is the default, but we also have a dark theme. I've had some issues with the dark theme, unfortunately, with some applications not having the text being able to be read because maybe it's dark text and dark background. You know, overall, I actually do prefer uh, Ambient Mate Dark. I think that's a pretty decent theme, even though I do run into issues every now and again. But because I run into issues with that, I generally stay with the default. And we can also see that there's other themes included here by default as well. If I remember correctly, this Menta theme is actually the default theme that you get with Mate if you were to install it on, say, Debian or something like that. So in my opinion, the ambient Mate theme looks much nicer. So there's really not a whole lot different here. The hardware enablement stack is the most um, important change because if you have newer hardware and you try to run Ubuntu 18.04 on that hardware, and you're not running point two or the new hardware enablement stack, you might have problems with drivers. Maybe some of your hardware may not be detected. I think that Canonical just doesn't get enough credit for this. They make a hardware enablement stack available with their LTS releases starting with the point two release on forward. And that ensures that we have new drivers so that 1804 or whatever the current LTS version is, can support newer hardware. A lot of distributions don't do that. In fact, uh, with Debian Stable, for example, Debian is a great distribution, don't get me wrong, it's fantastic. But its packages in Debian Stable are prehistoric. They're extremely old. The kernel never gets updated to a major new version unless the entire distribution gets updated, which happens between two and two and a half years. But in the meantime, you're stuck using a kernel with old driver support and generally speaking, the desktop experience isn't always that great. But with Ubuntu, they make a newer hardware enablement stack available for everyone. So that way you could go to the store and if you research Linux compatibility on your piece of hardware, you could be reasonably sure that it's gonna work just fine. Another thing I like about this release is Mate Tweak, which actually is not specific to Ubuntu Mate. It may have originated with Ubuntu Mate, I don't remember but it basically gives you the ability to change and uh, have a completely different layout. So I just showed you the default. That's what we have right now. And if I change that, you'll see the panels are different. Now I have this really awesome little menu bar down here, uh, which is really cool. Th this one is called Plank, which is something I generally install anyway. I think it looks really great on this release. And yes, it does seem very Mac-centric, and I'm not a fan of the Mac look and feel, but it does look great here. And we have other features such as a heads up display that we can enable as well, and a pull down terminal, which allows us to basically get a terminal. If we do need to uh, run a command, we have a drop down terminal. And you can see with F12, I can actually bring that terminal into view. So the elephant in the room is Ubuntu Mate 1810. I mean, that's been out for a while. So why am I looking at 1804 when 18.10 is out. And the reason for that is because 18.10 has no features that are worth upgrading for. Now it's a very important release to the developers of the Ubuntu Mate project because they're preparing for the next LTS. They're doing a lot of behind the scenes work. They actually contribute upstream to Mate. So the work that they're doing is valuable and is very important. But for the user, there's nothing in 18.10 that's worth upgrading for. Its main feature was having kernel 4.18, 
which we now have in 1804 with 1804.2. So the only reason you would even have to upgrade to 1810 now no longer exists. So with all this attention to detail, the polish, how fast and responsive Ubuntu Mate runs on my hardware, it's an absolute pleasure to use, and it's still one of my favorite distributions available. But why am I not running it on my machine full time? In my other videos, I've mentioned I'm running Pop! OS and Ubuntu most of the time. I didn't mention Ubuntu Mate. So why is that, you might be wondering. And the fact of the matter is that Ubuntu Mate has several very annoying, minor, but annoying bugs that annoy me to the point where I generally end up wiping it and loading something else. It's a shame to say that given how great this distribution is, and I certainly don't want to talk bad about it because the developers of this distribution deserve praise for the amount of work that they put into this. It, it's a great distribution. It looks great, it feels great, and it, there's just a lot of good things that I could say about it. But the problem is that there's these smaller bugs that I run into, and one example I'll show you right now is these two Wi-Fi icons right here in the panel. Now this bug has existed for pretty much the entire life of Ubuntu Mate. And it was fixed in the past, which was awesome, but it keeps coming back. Obviously this is a small problem. Having two Wi-Fi icons obviously isn't going to crash my system or make me lose work, but it's just an eyesore seeing two Wi-Fi icons, and it's just kind of embarrassing to have a problem like that. And I'm sure they'll probably get it fixed, but then again, at this point, I have no confidence that the problem won't come back again because it always seems to. And in addition, another bug that I run into often with Ubuntu Mate, and this is not an Ubuntu Mate specific issue, any distribution that runs Mate will have the same problem, where if your screen resolution changes, these icons here on the panel will actually shift positions. And they're not supposed to because if you right click, you can see they're locked to the panel. Now I don't have another display with me to actually show you this bug firsthand, but it always seems to happen. If I plug in a monitor that's a higher resolution, then I go back to this one, then it rearranges the icons. Other desktop environments don't have this problem. XFCE also doesn't have this problem. And the reason why I have such a problem with this is that Mate has had this problem for its entire life. In fact, GNOME 2, which is forked from, also had that bug where these applets get rearranged. The bug report exists, but the Mate developers can't seem to be bothered to fix it. Now, obviously, I would love to help and fix it myself if I was a developer, but all I can do is report the bug, and it's already been reported. But it's just one of those things that isn't going to be fixed, or at least doesn't seem to be, given by the number of years that this has been a problem. Now again, this is a small issue. My system isn't going to crash with these applets being rearranged, but having to manually move everything back where it's supposed to be every single time I plug in a monitor or disconnect a monitor, there's better use of my time than that, and it's just not something that I want to do. Now one workaround is I can use this Mate tweak and I could simply just go to a different layout. So for example, if I was having a problem, I could just switch to this one, then switch back to the one I had before, and it'll basically reset that. And I could probably even write a script to automatically run a command to do the exact same thing every time I connect or disconnect a monitor, but I don't wanna have to do that. And then a couple other issues that I've run into as well, and I don't know if they're the case here because I haven't spent enough time with 1804.2 to know, but I've had issues where when I shut down the computer, it'll freeze for about five minutes and do absolutely nothing, and the themes will go away, which will make it look like a Windows 95 theme because the user style basically drops, and it just locks up. It will shut down eventually, but it freezes, reminding me of how it used to be with Windows Vista and how long that took to shut down back in the day. And then the most uh, egregious problem to me is that with Ubuntu Mate, my USB ports will stop working. Where I plug a flash drive in, it's not detected and it can't be used. I never had that problem with GNOME or Pop! OS on the same hardware, so it's clearly a Mate issue, even though I'm not really sure what in Mate could cause an issue like that. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a great looking distribution. I mean, just look at it. It's very fast. You can see how fast everything loads and runs. If I just open up a few applications here, um, everything is pretty much instantaneous. If I check the memory usage here, we can see what that is. And we can see that uh, only about 509 megabytes or something like that are used. 
of my RAM, and that's pretty resource friendly if, if I was to run HTOP. So here's HTOP. I mean, look how resource friendly this is. I mean, it's, it's almost zero all the way around. I mean, I'm not running any applications, of course, but of all my cores, you can see very little is being used. And Mate, other than those issues that just don't seem to be fixed, it's actually an amazing distribution, and I really hate to talk bad about it, but you know I'm here to share my experiences with you guys, and if my experience is not always great, I have to be honest, it's not always great. But I do feel like if this distribution keeps going and they get these small issues fixed, then Ubuntu Mate is going to be even greater. In fact, if they were to fix even some of these problems, it would probably be my daily driver. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to take a quick look at 1804.2. And I did that, and now you know about the new release and its new hardware enablement stack. So I hope that was useful to you guys. If you guys have used this distribution, go ahead and let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are, and I'll see you again real soon. Thank you so much for watching my video, guys. I really appreciate it. And if you wanna help me out, go ahead and check out the links in the show notes below this video, where I have a link to my Patreon page, as well as an Amazon store, where I have a listing of hardware that I've personally tested myself to be compatible with Linux. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe, and I look forward to making more videos for you guys very soon. Thanks again.